Hey YouTube, Alan Pan here. In this video, I'm going to make a Cerebro helmet that's going to let me remote control other people. Like I said in my last video, we need something that can be remotely controlled, that can uh, apply a voltage across a load in either direction, and that can do so while limiting the current between 1.5 and 5 milliamps through a human head. First things that come to mind, obviously, Arduino and uh, radio modules, something like a, like a Zigbee if you're older like me, or uh, what one of those NRF modules or the uh, ESP8266, those are the hot new things. I'm just going to use a remote control toy car. Got this one from Toys R Us for about $13, wasn't the cheapest one, but I like the way the controller looked. I like how um, goofy it is turning a remote control car into a remote control person and depending on uh, where you are and where you source your parts, uh, uh, an RC car might actually just be cheaper. Now at first glance it seems like a remote control car is already perfect. You just cut the wires leading to the motors, you stick electrodes on them and put them behind your ears and you're good to go, right? Well there's a couple of problems. Uh, the first one is that the remote control car uh, doesn't have any kind of current limiting. So you don't really know how much current you're going to be putting through your own head. And uh, something like uh, electrodes attached to skin uh, across a skull has um, a varying load. The resistance is going to change from person to person and even within the same person over time, your skin tends to get more conductive as you pass current through it. Uh, so we need a way to keep that steady. We want to make sure that we can keep a constant current regardless of the load and regardless of uh, the environmental changes. Second of all, this particular RC car has got six, um, six volts, four AA batteries, so that's the most amount of voltage that can come uh, out of the wires into the motors. For most people, that's actually not enough voltage to even generate at least 1.5 milliamps. Skin resistance and, and uh, electrode resistance is pretty high. Um, so it's sort of like, <laughs> it's probably not going to be enough power and if it does provide enough power, it's probably going to be too much power and we won't be able to control it. So um, an RC card on its own is not going to be quite good enough for, for our needs. Um, so let's take a look at this circuit. This is the Cerebro circuit. There are three distinct sections here. The current limiter, the H bridge, and the uh, RC car receiver board. The power supply here is two four AAA battery packs, so each supplies six volts. For a total of 12 volts up here. So here's the board from the RC car. It's just a black box. All we care about is that it needs 6 volts and that it has two outputs which are labeled A and B. These are the wires that originally powered the steering motor. Uh, they connect to here A and B for clarity. Up here we have the current source or current limiter that's connected to 12 volts. These are PNP transistors and there's a nice feedback loop here. When enough current flows through this resistor such that the voltage drop here becomes 0.65 volts, this transistor begins to turn on, which raises the voltage of this node here, which will start to turn this transistor off. So the voltage drop across this resistor will never exceed about 0.65 volts. With a, with a 220 ohm resistor, that means that uh, about a flow of 3 milliamps is all that's ever going to come down this way. It won't ever be more than 3 milliamps. This circuit here is an H bridge and it allows us to switch the polarity of this 3 milliamps of current that's coming down here. So I use two logic level N channel MOSFETs and two logic level P channel MOSFETs. Uh, MOSFETs are sort of overkill since we're controlling milliwatts of power, but I wanted as little voltage drop as possible. Uh, the MOSFETs are controlled by these two NPN transistors here, which are connected to the uh, A and B outputs of the RC card guts. A and B are normally low, so these transistors are off, and these two N-channel MOSFETs are on, but these P-channel MOSFETs are off, so no current is flowing through our uh, load here. <laughs> when left is pushed on the remote, A goes high and B remains low. So when A goes high, this transistor turns on and brings the voltage of this node here down to ground. So when that happens here on this left side, this N channel MOSFET will turn off and this P channel MOSFET will turn on. So if we've got this on and this on and this off and this off, we've got a path to ground for the current to flow this way through the load. There we go. If right is toggled on the remote control, the opposite happens. A goes low and B goes high. When B goes high, uh, this transistor turns on, the node here drops down to ground, uh, this N channel MOSFET turns off, this P channel MOSFET turns on, 
on the A site here, this N channel MOSFET is on and this P channel MOSFET is off. So we've got these two MOSFETs on and the load then, uh, the current then flows through the load this way. So if you try this on your own, check the neutral voltage of A and B. Some cars may keep A and B high rather than low when the steering motor isn't being used. Also make sure that everything here shares the same ground. Everything here should be connected to the same electrical ground. Otherwise the circuit will misbehave or won't work at all. Here are the guts of our RC car. I just want to point out this is like a weird drifter type car. So uh, the transmission is all in these two wheels that can turn to steer and provide power. These wheels are actually just like plastic doohickeys that just kind of are there for decoration. So this is a really neat gearbox and I'm definitely going to hold on to this for like a weird future robotics platform. Another thing I want to point out is how nice this circuit board is. A lot of times with these cheap RC cars you have um, no labels, you just have wires soldered directly to the board and those will snap in no time if you don't get hot glue on them. But this guy's actually got JST connectors that are labeled. We can see forward, backwards here. This is for left, right. This is for the battery. And so that means we can just pull these out and we've got a, like a platform here ready to go, a robotics platform, just stick an Arduino on top or whatever. And we've also got our nice remote control module here. And we can just plug in our own power supply and we can put in our own uh, outputs for steering to hopefully steer some people around. All right, I'm all wired up. <laughs> got my H bridge here, got current source here, the outputs of our remote control car right over here. I've got the controller in my own hands. I've got two electrodes on my mastoid processes. If everything goes well, I'll pass no more than three milliamps through my head and stimulate my vestibular system. So I'm going to turn the car on, I'm going to turn the controller on, and toggling the joystick left or right should make me feel like I need to lean left or right. <sighs> okay. Uh, galvanic vestibular stimulation. Three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> Whew. Let's try it to the right. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, wow. Stings a little bit. I think we're pretty good, right? That's, that's, that's what, no more than three milliamps, right? Uh, okay, 2.2. .2. Okay. <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. Oh, I'm zapping my brain with electricity. <laughs> okay. Let's solder this up. Here it is, the helmet is a children's t-ball helmet. I uh, cut the sides out here and spray painted the whole thing silver. Uh, check out the description below to see the instructable that I followed to uh, make this helmet. The electronics box in the back is just screwed in with these two screws down here. Uh, it's, not, it's not even screwed up up here. You can see the electronics are exposed. Uh, this, is, this is just a sloppy job. Uh, I was trying to get this uh, helmet done pretty quick. Another thing that's that's kind of sloppy is if you look at the back here, uh, there's two switches for the two uh, separate power packs. So that's also kind of like non-ideal, not elegant. These cables are just uh, regular solid core wire with uh, silver beads slipped over them. I'm actually really pleased with this effect. They end in alligator clips to uh, clip onto the electrodes. The chin strap here is a dog collar 
that I got from the dollar store and uh, cut into two pieces and screwed the uh, ends into these screw holes here. These are actually really uh, convenient. I think they're there so that you can add like a, like a face plate or something. And over here, uh, this is the headband that I use to uh, keep the electrodes in place behind the ears. Um, this is like one of those uh, headphone headbands that uh, normally has speakers in here so you can wear these um, when you go to sleep. Uh, I'm pretty sure any regular headband would do just fine though. These electrodes have uh, copper sheets in them and they're held in place by these uh, plastic rectangles that I just cut off of some packaging. The sponges are regular cellulose sponges cut to about 1 by 2 inches and soaked in 100 millimole per liter saline solution or about 0.6 grams of salt in one cup of water. If you want to see the Mind Control Cerebro Helmet in action, make sure to click on the suggested link up here, I think, is where it is. Uh, <laughs> thanks for watching.